those sexy bitches. It is 1967, and shit's about to get fucked up. And I'm gonna tell you all about 1967 fashion, how do you dress like a 1967, and how do you continue that today, and how a bitch is dressing. We're gonna get into it. First and foremost, The Fool. This is, in my opinion, the icon of what 1967 was. It was a lot of fun. It was really crazy. It was sometimes not always fully paying attention to everything that it needed to, but it was crazy and everything was being let loose. There was implicit drug use in modern media. There was sometimes explicit drug use in modern media. Not modern media, not modern media, but like popular media. Like, you know, the biggest band of the era, the Beatles, really Sgt. Peppers. And that's crazy. That's crazy AF. And you know, while psychedelia had been looming, had been bubbling up, I'm pretty sure 1964 is when Timothy Leary started using LSD, or at least that's when he started having his friends have LSD. But in, in 1965 and then 1966 is when things would start coming up in the underground and groups would start coming together, groups start playing together. But 1967 is when it came to the mainstream and it was crazy AF. And what was even crazier is that you have, you know, probably a bunch of people from middle America still pretending like it's, you know, 1956. And all of a sudden, people on TV are dressed, dressed like this. And shit's going crazy. It's one of the best years in fashion history, in my personal opinion, obviously. But I'm going to tell you all about it and how you can dress like it. And how they dressed and how you could dress. And if you don't want to dress like this, I was going to say you're lame, but that's mean. I will instead say it'll be fun historical context. First and foremost, what was 1967 psychedelic fashion influenced by? First, like, most importantly, India. Obviously, this is influenced by India. It's also influenced by medieval fashion. Both of which had, I think, a lot in common in terms of silhouettes. Um, well, not always in silhouettes, but a lot in terms of, um, like, fun textiles, a lot of color. Of course, the medieval fashion in terms of, like, royal medieval fashion, not like, you know, you're wearing, like, a, like a cloth tunic and you toil on a field. Very, very fun, very royal, very cool. But anyways, um, in terms of medieval fashion... This definitely, I mean, look at that, that that's like psychedelic itself, like, this is, this is how they wanted to dress. Um, but also the influence from India, a lot of artists were going to India at this time. Um, and those are the big influences. Um, I would also argue that the 1920s was a bit of an influence in the terms, in, like, silhouettes, very loose shapes, which I believe, in my, I'm not a fashion historian, but from what I know, since... After like the early 30s, we would not see those straight lines, at least on women, until I would say the late 60s. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, fashion historians. But a lot of crazy things are going on, and we're gonna get into it. First and foremost, um, first and foremost, let's analyze this. Hello. Um, just crazy, crazy colors, crazy everything. Patterns, capes, loose silhouettes, um, long, longer longer tunics, longer, um, just longer lines, longer coats, um, a lot of, I've, I've described this before, basically, it's a lot of fights between the new and the old, especially 1967, because this is when it's almost just emerging, um, it's gonna be, like, there will be, like, there will be some, like, like, obviously, these are a lot of, um, silhouettes that were not how people in England were dressing, um, but there are a lot of looks that are sort of, like, they're kind of like, like silhouettes that were already popular in the 60s, but just in like a crazy psychedelic um, print. So it's kind of like a fight between, and then also a lot of like clothes are still very like kind of gendered at this time. I think that the, the lines between gender become more blurry in the late 60s, early 70s. But at this time, it's still very like, you know, I mean, like, yes, they were getting longer tunics, but a lot of guys were still wearing dress shoes like coats and you know like button downs and a lot of girls wearing dresses but they would have like these crazy psychedelic prints so there's a lot of new and old colliding clashing in both fashion and beyond so yeah let's get into it medieval revival okay whoa here's donovan straight up medievaling it out we also have um him in a cape 
also very medieval inspired, the big sleeves, a lot of capes at this time, a lot of huge sleeves at this time, a lot of velvet at this time. Um, another one, let me show you. This is Sid Barrett with the rest of Pink Floyd. Apparently no one else got the psychedelic memo, but um, it's got this, I don't know what the hell just happened there. Um, sorry, by the way, apologies that I'm using my iPad. Um, I was going to print them out. Sorry if it's ruining the, the immersion, the illusion. Stop that. Um, but I didn't want to print this all out and kill a tree. But basically, uh, I mean, I guess the tree's already, you know what I mean? Uh, but there's like, obviously, tons of color, um, fur vests, just a lot of, also, this is interesting because it has, it's not a button down, it's just kind of a, kind of a knitted top. So there's a lot of button downs, but there was a little bit more freedom in terms of necklines, um, Where's, where's Jimmy? Where's Jimmy? Here we go. You can see again, examples of color, examples of Indian and also medieval influences. Um, we have this amazing embroidered, I think brocade would be the right word for it. Again, not a fashion historian, just a girl who loves fashion. Uh, vest, velvet, duh, a lot of royal colors. Um, and then these, there's like a lot of examples of these amazing lace trim, uh, tops that I think are absolutely amazing. Also these striped pants. Um, another thing to note about pants, a lot of times when you see like 60s costumes, they'll have bell bottoms and a lot of people think that bell bottoms were a thing in the 60s and quite frankly they weren't. Um, they were, pants got baggier by 69 but here's a picture from 67, George Harrison and Patty Boyd. The pants are straight. They're still straight. They start getting a flare, but they're not a belt bottom yet. Um, and they'll start getting a flared shape, but they they don't they don't get a bell until the six the, the 70s. This is another amazing example. Patty Boyd and George Harrison. You see the gladiator sandals. You see this amazing embroidered vest again. You get these amazing balloon sleeves again. Loose sleeves, mini dresses short short dresses like even shorter than the mini dresses we have now sometimes um and huge lapels are a big thing that'll remain in style until the the mid 70s um but again huge again like kind of like a mostly normal coat but just in like an amazing pattern um let me show you let me see a lot of silks were popular at this time silks and velvet um you can see in this picture this amazing silky top that's just absolutely crazy a lot of ruffles oh my god stop it stop it sorry a lot of ruffles um also a lot of vests a lot of pendants um also these amazing uh, colored pants i think to this day we just don't have enough of a lot of colored pants in this period sometimes more of like a dress pant sometimes more of a satiny material as you can see on jimmy hendrix um makeup wise things where it's kind of like a, sorry, weird things happening in my body. It's kind of a, again, a fight between the old and the new. Part of this movement is going to have a lot of really crazy fashion, but also part of this movement is going to be start to move towards the hippie sentiment of kind of less makeup. But at this time, it's still mostly a lot of colors. Um, this is an image of some amazing colorful eyeshadow from the late 60s. Um, also, twiggy lashes popular at this time not necessarily exclusive to the psychedelic movement but definitely a part of it um also there were some more intricate eye looks as well um this is just an image a late 60s advertisement for makeup just so you can see sort of the colors my lipstick is probably a little bit too dark um but because it was a lot of like pastel-y pink shades a lot of really light pastel -y pink um cheeks and then a lot of really light but also you can see these have the, um, the, um, really big, like, these, like, kind of a cut line on, on the eyeshadow, um, as well as an upward wing. Mine's kind of down, sorry, but I do have the little twiggy lashes. Um, let me see, let me see. Apologies that I'm not super structured, but there's a lot of things I wanted to talk about. Um, also, this is the Patty Boy dress. Apologies for the watermark, but with an archivist, 
and it's just really cool and I love the way that they would just put clashing patterns together just really really crazy really just bringing it all together um there weren't a lot of rules you know people were just kind of doing again this is um it's emblematic of of psychedelia of acid of tripping so obviously the stuff was really crazy and there were, weren't a lot of like it was really just like as big as your mind could dream it was what they were doing um i was talking about the fool the fool was also an art collective and it was leading me to this um it was an art collective that was hugely hugely influential to this movement and to 1967 and to fashion and um especially psychedelia and psychedelic fashion and um here is a picture of them where did it go hello here it is this is the fool there were other members but kind of part of the core group and you can see just amazing colors velvet capes um this is absolutely amazing i think that there should be more shapes <laughs> in psychedelic fashion like these little stars like that's just amazing i love this coat with the zigzag um hem just amazing also crochet crochet becomes very popular in this time and will remain popular until the 70s into the 70s another cape another big bow also these pants are crazy with the one pant leg being a different color as big as you can dream it again just so 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 much color and um this this art collective did um a lot of the clothing for the beatles um and this was the you should probably see a picture of it but this was the building the mural that they did for the apple boutique in london um and it would be painted over because they got the city yelled at them and was like you couldn't make that but um it was only open for six months because people would steal from the apple boutique and the Beatles being the cool guys they were didn't want to call the cops and but then they ended up losing all their money and so it closed um which is sad because it looks so glam and so gorge um and I love this picture apologies for the graininess but I think it's really emblematic of kind of where the psychedelics culture stood like it just really stood crazy amongst everything else that was happening um and how everyone else looked um important to note that psychedelic fashions were not super like it was it's kind of overrepresented in media now just because it was so cool and so much fun but obviously most people didn't dress like this this was kind of just like the the fun trendy people in the city um and people who were involved in this counterculture and in this subculture it wasn't everyone um most people in 1967 were wearing what they wore in 1966 um so yeah but it, it it is a really really fun sort of movement also i was saying uh, i was talking about like um 1920 being a um influence you can see a drop waist here on patty boyd and this is a dress from the fool um more from the fool perhaps one of the greatest photo shoots i've ever seen this is all clothing by the fool patty boyd in the middle i feel bad i don't know the other um models names but they're amazing and glam as well and this is just like like are you kidding me are you kidding me just like the most fun and whimsical colors and just like this vest unfortunately these are looks that are a lot harder to recreate now because we just don't have this anymore but you can see again the makeup a lot of pastels a lot of bronze um really bronze um blushes um, but she has a red lip on oh my god this is another full look actually so fun to look on um but yeah there's a a lot of just like the fool ugh, the fool is everything the fool is amazing and oh this is another picture from the apple boutique and i just i love i love this i love the shapes i love the star corset i love all of the amazing patterns put together i love this leather like space age circle vest it's so good it's so much fun as you can see a lot of makeup a lot of just big hair a lot of just like everything also um she's wearing you can 
can see kind of like tall boots. Um, go-go boots were a part, like psychedelic girls would wear go-go boots. You see a picture of Marianne Faithful wearing red go-go boots, but it's usually more like really like big fun boots, um, like uh, more bright colors. Um, I love this here to show you. I do have a silver space age pair of go-go boots that are perhaps the best thing in my collection um but they are absolutely divine and that's another kind of another influence i would say on psychedelic fashion or not necessarily influence but just something that's happening at the same time it was very like a dreaming of space you saw a lot of stars on on the designs it's also kind of a reminiscent of the space age sort of vibe that was going on at the time um it was it was an era that was also very interested in sci-fi um star trek premiered the year before so that's also happening at this time um also just a quick note oh also i wanted to show you about this another this is um the equals it's actually 1968 but i just love i love this i love everything in this photo the big sleeves the are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's so good. It's all the colors, all the everything. It's amazing. Um, also, this is a picture of, I believe, um, Honey Bus. I should have marked what this was for because there's a lot of really small psychedelic bands at the time. But I think this is a, a really fun picture because I just love the big sleeves. I think it also shows kind of the more medieval side, the big sleeves, all the, the vests. Um, it also shows kind of a more neutral palette for the psychedelic look, but still psychedelic. Um, so anyways, now that you've seen a lot of images, and I, I'm giving you here just for reference if I want to show you anything else. Oh, sorry, one more. Brian Jones. Are you kidding me? This coat, the fur, the fur trim, also scarves. The more scarves, the better, honestly. It just kind of giving you a palette of what to think of when you're dressing 1967. Things to think of. Fur trim. Fur trim coats. Fur trim vests. Fur trim. Fur trim. Fur trim everything. Um, also, pendants. Big pendants. Chains. Long chains. Short chains. As many chains as you can add onto an outfit. Lots and lots and lots of rings. Lots of rings. Lots of bracelets. Lots of, um, lots of scarves. Scarves in the hair. Scarves around you. Um, lace, big frilly lace collars, lace on the end of, of your sleeves. Why did I forget what a sleeve was? Um, fur trim, as I said, vests. Every if you if you go to a thrift store and you see vests and you want to dress on C seven, you better get every vest you can find, okay? Because they were not shy when it came to vests. A lot of vests. A lot of um. There's a lot of really really bright colors. The more bright colors you can find, the better. Again, as I was saying with the pants, it's a, it's probably more straight leg than you were envisioning, but also not always completely straight leg. You know what I'm saying. Um, but a lot of like really brightly colored slacks, a lot of brightly colored, um, also kind of like a cottony material pant. Um, also mini dresses, very, very short mini dresses. I have actually found some reproduction, almost like Halloween costume dresses at thrift stores that actually look pretty good. So sometimes those can can be good. Um, also look for velvet. Velvet everything is very popular at this time. Um, velvet vests, velvet coats. If, you can, if you're lucky enough to find some velvet pants, you can also find like corduroy pants, I think would give a kind of like the same vibe, the same illusion. Um, mini skirts, mini dresses. Um, obviously bright colors i said that before but i cannot hammer home enough bright colors um this is a picture of sun forest one of my favorite bands um they have an album called sounds of sun forest that is not on spotify they aren't on spotify for some reason but it is available here on youtube um and this again is showing a lot of the medieval influence their music also shows a lot of the medieval influence oh my god stop it stop it um also flower crowns flower crowns are a big thing at this time um and there are oh, as Janice Joplin, except I think this is the year after. You can tell this is kind of moving more into the hippie fashion of the time. 
Um, but this is, um, I, I think from 67, and you can see again, she has this big embroidered coat, velvet, silky materials, big sleeves, cannot go big enough with the sleeves. Um, she's also wearing velvet pants, as I said before, long chains, um, and let me see. But yeah, a lot of just knee-high boots. If you can't do a knee-high boot, get knee-high socks. That's also, um, and you could do, and sometimes I used to do this, I, my white shoes kind of fell apart, but I used to have little white shoes, like little small heels with, um, white socks. That kind of gives the illusion of a white go-go boot, but you can also just do like knee-high socks. That was a part of the style of the time and just low heels, low heels for the most part. Um, these, you can see these heels on Mary and Faithful are a little bit higher. They're like two, three inches, but that's on the boot. Most heels at the time were about one to two inches, a little bit shorter. Um, yeah. And also, velvet, always velvet, always prints. A lot of really, really big prints. And yeah, it's basically, I hope that you kind of got the idea of how people were dressing of, um, this is another one. I think it's a fun picture. It's of the Who. And um, I love this embroidered coat that looks like either buttons or almost coins. Um, it really shows the, in this ruffle velvet coat, it really shows the, um, how wide the imagination was at the time. Um, but yeah, I hope that this kind of gives you an idea of what to look for when you're shopping, when you're trying to go for this era, because it's, it looks very like, it looks like it would be something that you have to have like very specific pieces for. And if you're looking for, you know, this, obviously you might need to start sewing if that's something that you wanted to do. Although I will say they do still make a lot of really cool patterns. I found some really interesting fabrics that are very psychedelic, psychedelic reminiscent on Etsy. And also I found them actually in a local fabric store in New York. So you could still find that fabric. Um, and sewing obviously gives you a lot more range, but there is a lot of stuff that you can, like again, like look at this Patty Boyd look. I mean, she's just wearing a scarf around her hips and a printed dress and then a fun printed like cape on top. You could 1000% remake this with things that you find, um, at the thrift store. And also, um, uh, printed, uh, colored tights do become popular in this time as well basically any way that you can infuse color into your look um, will be, will be for the best, quite frankly. Um, this is actually 60, 68, but this is a picture of the incredible string band. And again, you can see the high collar, vest, beads, hats, big floppy hats also become very popular at this time. Um, a lot of these pictures are from Again, I, I feel bad. I do have like, not intentional, but probably blind spots for a lot of places outside of the US and England. That's where most of this is coming from. Also, like, it's hard to talk at kind of a lower volume sometimes. Um, also, I do think it's important to to bring up, um, obviously a lot of influence from India, um, and a lot of influence from a lot of different cultures at the time. And I think it's important to kind of bring up, like, does this fall into cultural appropriation? It could be. And before anyone yells in the comments and is like, that doesn't matter. Bah, 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 bah. First of all, first of all, if you <laughs> take a look at yourself, if you're white, you have no place to, like, come on, girl. Like, let's, let's be real. Um, we can all be, whether or not you think that that's important or not, we can all be mindful of who we are and, like, mindful of who we are in society. And, you know. Like, what does it mean that this English guy is wearing, like, Indian garments in 1967? Like, listen, I'm not saying that they were bad or that they were wrong for doing that, but I am saying that in in a revivalist effort, I think we should be mindful of what we wear. Um, you know, I, I personally, again, correct me if I'm wrong, if you disagree, let me know. I think that this is a garment that's fine to wear. Um, you know, I don't think it's necessarily... You know, I haven't heard anyone say, like, you shouldn't wear this. But, like, I found this, um, like, 
This is um, a picture from, I believe it's actually a little bit later, but it's um, a model and she has like a bindi on. And it's like, well, that was a choice. Maybe we shouldn't do that anymore. Um, there was also a really big um, Native American influence, indigenous influence um, on the psychedelic, not the psychedelic movement exactly, that was a little bit more later into the hippie period. Again, it's something just to be, just be mindful of what you're wearing and just make sure it's not something that people are like, hey, maybe not, um, because, it, you know, it can be offensive. And before you get all mad, here's the thing. There, as you've seen, there is enough fun shit to wear from this period. You don't need to, like, wear shit that's offensive. You know what I mean? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. This is an amazing and fun exploration on the close of 1967. It is my favorite period for fashion. Um, well, not my absolute, well, perhaps my favorite year, but I also love um, 20s fashion as well. And I love 60s fashion, and I love 70s fashion, and I love, sometimes I love 80s fashion, I won't lie. And I love 2000s fashion, but 67 might just be the top tier for me. And the 60s and the 20s are the best decades in fashion in recent times, in my opinion. I'm also a big medieval fashion girl, which is probably why I love it so much. Um, but yeah, just remember, with this look, less is more. Scarves, yes. Um, in the hair, in everywhere. Um, also, again, there is sort of, you know, there is a fight between, is it new? Is it old? Should we wear this? Should we wear that? And, um, so when you're dressing for this period, remember that it wasn't totally into the hippie movement yet. It wasn't totally loose jeans and tie-dye yet. There was still some more constrictedness about it, as you can see with this. It's loose, but it's also a very constructed garment, I guess. Things to think about. Um, but as you, I would, I would suggest that if you are interested in any period, vintage-wise, instead of like, like okay, not to like, again, like reading books is great, but honestly, the how I know how to dress, literally make a Pinterest and just start looking at vintage images. And when you've started looking at them for years and years and years, you will know how people dressed, um, at least how people dressed in certain movements and subcultures. And just looking at that and constantly looking at more and more examples, um, you will get a better and better picture of what would be historically accurate for the time. Again, I'm not a historical purist. purist. I don't think you have to dress um, like at a specific, you don't have to like, like if you want to wear go-go boots with a modern dress, it's okay. I won't tell on you. But if you want to dress 67, this is where to start. I also forgot to mention, I wanted to mention this as well. Um, chain belts became popular in this year as well. And I have a picture of it and I just can't seem to find it. Here it is. Okay. Also just an amazing picture because I love, I love how every single thing he's wearing is printed pants, shirt, um, fur trim jacket, like everything, everything's printed. Um, but this has, he has a chain belt on, chain belts were rather at the time, and I'm actually wearing a chain belt as a pendant, because I don't have a long pendant, and I wish I had one. I usually wear this as a belt, you can see there's a clasp, but it's fun to wear as a chain. And also, I know that everyone's gonna be like, you know, the thrift store doesn't have that stuff anymore. Listen, you gotta get creative, you won't always get exact stuff from the 60s but you can find stuff that's similar also don't don't sometimes you get lucky sometimes you find really old stuff also online sometimes you find better deals than like you could you can get credit for i as someone who's been shopping for 60 stuff online for almost five years now honestly the prices have gone down um i found some some cheaper stuff in the 40s and 50s range um, for, for 60s clothing and sometimes psychedelic clothing. This, I got super lucky. This was $30 and it is vintage. So sometimes we get really lucky. You never know. Um, but yeah, I also want to do another video going more in depth on how to dress, how to get vintage clothes today and how to dress, how to just get a good style of shopping, um, and a way to shop and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that soon also. I might do another video doing just a full collection of all my psychedelic dresses. I didn't want to do that in this video because selfishly, I like to like surprise people with what I'm wearing. So I don't want to like show you all my cards, show you all my dresses. 
Um, but I might do that if someone, if anyone wants it. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this taught you a little bit about the 60s, the 60s, the 60s, and specifically 1967. And what an amazing and beautiful and fun year it was. It was very much a party that happened very briefly in the eye of the storm that was the tumultuous and crazily important 60s. You know, all of this, again, this was all happening and everyone was having a lot of fun, but also at the same time, a lot of, a lot of things were happening. A lot of political moves were being made in 1968. We have Columbia protests. We have, we have France, like almost revolution. We have all sorts of crazy shit that happened. So that's all happening at the same time. And while I think a lot of people criticize the psychedelic movement for being, you know, well, let's like criticize the flower power movement for being like a very, um, you know, very like, Oh, everyone's just having fun and you know important political things are happening that is true but also i think that this is also reminiscent of the fact that young people as a whole were i think very revolutionary and they're um they're pushing back on on the current social climate and culture and war and all those things so yeah i hope you enjoyed and i may want to do more history videos so hopefully more will come